this way. Okay. Hi guys. <laughs> These are always so funny getting started because I'm like, are you there? Are you there? Um, welcome to just album release day. It's so exciting. Um, I've seen all of your messages and posts about the album and it seems like you guys really like it, which makes me so happy. And I had asked earlier in the week on my Instagram for you to submit your questions and we were going to do 29 questions, um, live. So that's what we're doing. And my team and I have gotten 29 questions together that I'm going to answer and hopefully it's yours. And I also want to let you know that at the end of this live stream, be sure to stay on this link because you're going to get exclusive content from behind the scenes of being in the recording studio recording all of this music and it's pretty awesome so we're gonna get started my first question they're kind of like in little segments i see so the overall project here are eight questions about that sarah loves cp how did you come up with the name written in stone so sarah i wrote the last song of the album, which is called Mean It This Time. And in there it says, when I say forever, I want to write it in stone. And to me, that's just kind of the overall theme of the whole album. And the essence of written in stone for me means your words and your actions and your truth should be written in stone. And I feel like I've done this from top to bottom in these 15 songs. So that's where it came from. Next, Emily Wing. The 29 EP was black and white. Why did you decide to make Written in Stone in color? I feel like during the pandemic, really the only thing that we could control as artists because we weren't out on the road was kind of creatively online, visually what we were showing you guys. And so for me, I feel like the first seven songs of the 29 project were pretty sad and in a place where I was kind of just coming to terms with what was happening to me in real time. And so I thought visually it should kind of be this more somber, gray, sad, um, contemplative overall theme with the imaging. And so when 29 written in stone was ready to come out, it just felt very much like the whole story. And I was, I was, and am in a really, really good place and felt like it should kind of symbolize that and show that I was in color. Carly's Gwen, the cover on the album gives me extreme nineties women of country vibes. Was this the goal? Um, that is so awesome that you feel that way. And I think that that's the music that I grew up on. That's the music that I um, moved to Nashville, just loving and wanting to be like. And so I think in the back of my mind, I was thinking about people like Patty Loveless and Leanne Walmack and Trisha Yearwood and all those females that I listened to, hoping that maybe some of their music and their influence on me would come through. So I'm happy that it did. Brittles with a lot of S's. When did you know that the album was finished? Um, I think it's really hard for me to explain this process. It's been like nothing I've ever done. This is the first time that I've written every song and I feel like I was writing them in real time. And I just knew, I don't know how to explain that. Um, I kind of started to have holes that I felt like I was filling and somewhere in there i just realized maybe i had one more song to add and then i finished it or something i just i could tell that it was finished uh because i felt like in my heart i had kind of word vomited everything about this this scenario and this time in my life um and so it felt finished jiller win 31 did you always know 29 would become a larger more comprehensive collection no, I didn't. I remember in the beginning of the pandemic when we made the decision to pivot off of my sophomore album, um, my label head, Scott Borchetta, he had a conversation with me, a very honest conversation. And he said, I know that you're the type of artist that's going to have to write about what is going on in your life. So I want you to go do that and we'll figure out the rest. And he gave me that creative freedom to just go and make this project 
maybe nobody was ever going to hear it. Maybe they were, we weren't really sure, but he knew I needed to write it. And in return, I just felt like fans and everyone got to know me so much better. And we had such a deeper connection that it inspired me to keep going. Tyler Miller, 14. When will the vinyl of the new music come out? That's a great question, Tyler. Does anybody on this bus know? It's pre-ordered on Walmart right now. At Walmart. It's pre-ordered on walmart.com right now. Yeah, you can pre-order it. So you could go pre-order it right now, Tyler. The Edster. How fun was it writing with Shane and Josh? Oh, my goodness. So Shane McAnally, some of you guys watch Songland. He is on there and and that's his show and josh osborne they pretty much ruled the country music radio for the last five years um they produced this album with me and it was just so much fun to get to write with two people that loved 90s country like me but also are just absolute geniuses when it comes to the writing it's it's just crazy i feel like i'm a better writer from writing this album with them jakes and him what do you want listeners to take away from this album well, I think that I laid my entire heart out of being faced with something that I never wanted to face or be faced with. And I decided instead of running from it or shying away from it or acting like it never happened, I decided to walk through it. And with all of that um, came a lot of different emotions, but I now stand here today as the album's coming out a better, stronger, happier person. And it's because I chose to walk through a scenario that maybe wasn't what I saw coming in my life, but it is what it is. And I, and I decided to learn from it and not let it defeat me. So if you're on a journey, I hope that that's what you get out of this and you feel, you feel understood, but also, um, can see that there's good in sometimes the things that are the hardest. Okay. Touring three touring questions. Carly's Gwen, do you plan on touring to Canada again when it is allowed? We miss you. Oh my gosh. I love coming to Canada. My band loves coming to Canada. We talk about that a lot. So I promise you as soon as we can, we will be back. Promise. Country, or I'm sorry, Courtney Kramer, 24. Would you consider doing an acoustic tour for this album? It's very funny that you say that because, um, we are going to do this a little different. Um, I'm a big storyteller. If you've ever been in Nashville and seen me play at places like the listening room or the bluebird, or even come and see me at the Opry, you know, that that storyteller side of things is very important to me. And the musical side of things is very important to me. And so since this is like my first little tour and this album is so special to me and is my story, we're going to do something a little different. So you're just gonna have to come and see it. I announced the tour dates today. Go check it out. Come make a road trip out of it. Please come see me. Driving gas thing, driven gas thing. It's probably wrong. Hi, Carly. Will you have any signed copies with you on tour? Of course I will. And if you come and see me, I will sign it for you. So you just have to come see me. I'll sign whatever you want me to sign. Song specific, Jessica Bonson. Which song was the quickest song to write? That's a really good question. Um, I think that two that I remember being super fast were the last two of the album. Um, I went on a beach trip uh, at the beginning of the year with three people that I love so much, Jordan Reynolds, Jordan Minton, and Emily Shackleton. And we wrote Mean It This Time and All the Whiskey in the World in the same night. And it was like we were drinking wine and in our fields and we almost couldn't write those songs as fast as they were happening. So they were both really fast. It was a very productive writer's trip. Colin Dibbs Kels. It's a large name. What is your favorite line from the new songs? Oh my goodness. Um, I think a lyric in easy going, um, roses hide thorns, devils hide horns. Guess I finally saw yours. And if you looked on my Instagram, I just released that I'm going to have some new merch and, um, that's one of the lyrics on the sweatshirt and the t-shirt that I, um, designed with my, merch connoisseur sydney if you guys follow carly p connect um she helps design a lot of things and uh she's sitting here and she's awkward and feels <laughs> stupid but um she has such a vision creatively and is helping me make my merch cool so thank you sydney 
Erica Lashes. If I saying that wrong, sorry. What song was the most fun to write on the album? Diamondback was super fun to write just because it's edgy and it's quirky and fun. It made me feel like Natalie Maines of the Chicks in the best way. And um, also Easy Going was really fun. I think those two sassy moments were just super fun. Jalem018, which song from the album are you the most excited to play in front of people? I am so excited to have an album that I am so proud of, top to bottom, every single song, all 15 songs, that I just want to bring that entire thing to you. So when you come to the 29 tour, um, you will hear every single song from top to bottom off of the album. And that is just so exciting. I can't wait. Marley Ray 3, who came up with the line, whiskey in the water, Berman in the blood, and Dear Miss Loretta, love it. You know, these songs were written kind of a while ago, um, some of them. Actually, Dear Miss Loretta was written during the period of the first half of 29, but we just didn't really feel like it was right yet to put it on that part. But I wrote that song with Shane McAnally and Brandy Clark, and we were just talking about my Kentucky roots. So somewhere in there, somebody said that. Um, I'm not really sure, but when you write with the two of them, it's bound to be good. Ashy Cole... 512. What was it like getting to sing with Patty Loveless on Dear Miss Loretta? <gasps> oh my gosh. I'm a huge Patty Loveless fan. If you remember when I put Next Girl out last year, it was my slogan was what would Patty Loveless do in 2020? And she's become a dear friend and just getting to hear her voice on a song with me on a song that I wrote that's so special to me was like mind blowing. It felt like I was singing with my sister. Madeline Walker, which song was the most healing? Hmm. I feel like they were all healing in their own way. I think that getting to the place of mean at this time where I was hopeful and excited about my future and kind of gave myself grace and less feelings of being ashamed or embarrassed of my divorce and being excited to find the love that I deserve, that, that was like a very special moment for me. I don't know how to say this name. Ren, Ren Hula Kev 13. We'll go with that. Which track do you consider to be the most vulnerable? Oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like this whole album is so vulnerable, but probably 29. I lay it all out there in that song. And I remember when we were writing that song, being a little bit terrified of it, but also felt like it was necessary. Um, so that one. Lassie 1616. Which song are you most excited to make a music video for? I hope that I get to make a music video for Diamondback because I have some ideas. I may have some props that would fit perfect in the video. That's all I say. Anna E. Garlington. Did y'all drink wine when you wrote Diamondback? We should have, shouldn't we? Um, we actually didn't, but that was a super, super fun day of writing. And... Um, I'm so proud to have a song with Kelsey on this album. And um, that was just a fun one to write. McQueenie B. How did the song with Ashley McBride come about? I have always loved Ashley and loved her music and loved her voice. And I've only asked two of my peers to write with me, one being Luke Combs. And we wrote, I hope you're happy now. So kind of worked to that time and Ashley and we got in the room and just kind of started figuring out what kind of duet could we write together because we both wanted to write a duet which made me really happy and we just landed on this story of two women who are burned by the same man and how sometimes both people can be so innocent in their feelings and kind of have this realization um, that they both have been duped. Mick, okay, this is life, career, and being 29. Mickiro XO, I'm about to be 28 and single. How do you own it? Oh my goodness. Um, let's see. I think that you have to trust whatever. Faith is a huge thing to me, and I believe that God brings people in your life for a reason, season, or lifetime. And so, 
I think that you just have to own that this is the season that you're in and it's building you up for some reason for whatever chapter is going to happen next. And that waiting in that really truly, I call it the blind faith is the hardest season because you just truly have to trust the process. But I promise you, as I have seen, and as I thought my world was over, you're going to be fine. Talk to me in a year. Larhoff 11. Were there any songs off every little thing that resonated more for you at 29? Huh. As I sit here and think about what in the world was on every little thing. <laughs> um, that feels like 400 years ago. Um, if my name was whiskey for sure. Um, I think when you go through situations in your life where, um, you know, drinking is an, is a thing. Um, things can resonate a little bit more with you. And I would say probably every little thing as well. Um, oh, thank you. She pulled up the songs. Um, doing it right. It's about a, you know, bad relationship. Um, and then I think, you know, where to find me, you know, my producer Busby passed away at the end of 2019 and, um, that was the first song we ever wrote together. So that one will always be special. Carrie 804, dream collaboration. Well, I have a lot of dream collaborations. I, um, would love to sing with Dolly. I would love to sing with Leanne Womack. I would love to sing with Allison Krauss and Union Station. I'm a huge bluegrass fan, so I would love to do that. Um, those would probably be my top three. I'm about to sneeze and I'm so sorry. <coughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> sorry guys. Um, let's, I have too many hair products in my hair right now. Emily Wing, what does becoming an Opry member during this time in your career mean to you? Oh my goodness. Um, being an Opry member was what I dreamt of since I was a little girl. When people would ask me, you know, what's, what do you want to do in your life? That was always the number one thing for me. And so to have it happen in this year, just in the year that I feel like so many things have just clicked in every aspect of my life, um, it feels so special and uh, just right on time. Again, not understanding why things happen the way that they do, but then as they're unfolding in front of you, you go, oh, I get it now. So one of the most proud I think I'll ever be in my life. What is one piece of advice you would have written in stone and why? Hmm. Um, I think trust your gut and take your time. I think in a lot of ways, uh, you know, hindsight is 2020 always, but just taking your time, trusting your process, um, and really just being in tune with your gut. I feel like your gut tells you a lot of things. Um, and it's really always right. You know, in your heart, if something is right. Sean J. Sellers, pineapple on pizza. Um, I mean, yeah, I would eat it. But for me, I like just tons and tons of veggies on people. Pizza, not on people. <laughs> on pizza. Um, but I like pineapple on pizza. The only thing that I don't really understand on pizza is like um, ham and chicken. That grosses me out. I'll eat sausage or I'll eat uh, pepperoni, but I don't really want chicken like barbecue chicken pizza it makes me want to throw up. Sorry if that offended you. Nuria Fernandez, what advice would you give to someone who wants to make a living with music? It's a great question. I think just really figure out what makes you unique and do that and work outwork everybody. Um, really try to figure out what makes your art separate from everybody else. Um, There's so few slots in music. I always think about the top 40 chart and there are so many people that move to Nashville and, and there's only 40 slots for songs. And um, I just think that really figuring out what your narrative is, is really important. 
Oh, I get to answer questions on here now because I already did 29 questions. So if you have more questions, um, write them in the comments and I'll try to answer as many as I can in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, this is fun. Let's see. I'd love to be able to meet you at Joe's on Weed. Will the show be new stuff? Um, yes, it's all going to be new. Uh, playing the whole album top to bottom. Um, and then obviously some of my other well-known songs that you guys know. And um, yes, so please come. Let's see. Let's see. I love your drinking my problem. Do you have any real experiences like the lyrics say? Well, I don't think I would have written it if I didn't have an experience with it. <sighs> when are you coming to Australia? Oh my gosh, I would love to come back to Australia sometime. Um, hopefully we can get over there in the next couple of years or year or whatever. I know it's hard just with the traveling internationally right now. Any rappers you would like to collaborate like Tim McGraw and Nelly did? Um, I don't know that that's for me, um, but I sure do love some Nelly. I got to play a show with Nelly here about a um, month ago, and it was super fun. Let's see. How did you decide on the track listing order with the full album? I wanted to take you on the journey and kind of reimagine the seven songs from the EP and put them into this album kind of almost in real time from start to finish of my story. Today's my 31st birthday. Thank you for the great birthday gift. Oh, happy birthday, Austin. We're the same age. Let's see. How do we get access to the pre-sale for concert tickets? Do you know that answer? I think I'm going to post it. We're not sure yet, but stay tuned. We'll find out. What's the next single? My next single is Never Wanted to Be That Girl with Ashley McBride. So it um, goes to radio. Um, I know iHeart is already playing it, which is so awesome. And then it goes for ads on Monday. So you'll be hearing it, hopefully. Let's see. Why is Next Girl not on country radio anymore? It ran its course. It's um it ran its course. It went it was a hit for me and I'm so happy and now I'm excited to move on to never wanted to be that girl. Let's see. I was wondering when will American Girl come out? I'm curious before basic training. Um I'm assuming Oh, I will be posting the pre-sale code on Monday. So there you go for my tour for tickets. I told you we'd find out. Um, American Daughter, I assume, is what you're talking about. And that probably will not be out for a while. Um, I hope that it's on a future project, though, because I do love it. Phenomenal album. My only question is what's next? Are you, as you set the bar so high with this one, that's a long climb out to do it. Um, oh my gosh, I'm not even really thinking about the next album right now. I haven't written a song since I finished 29 written in stone. And um, I know that I just need to go out there and live a little and it'll come to me. I fully believe that. What's the most fun part of being on tour with Lady A right now? So today we're in Irvine, California uh, with Lady A on the What A Song Can Do tour. And I love Lady A so much. They are three of my favorite people in Nashville and have been longtime friends of mine. And I think my favorite part is getting to go out and just kind of be a fangirl. Um, we go and watch their shows quite a bit uh, out front and just sing along with everybody because I'm a huge fan. Happy birthday to Nicker wherever you are. What male performer would you like to do a duet with? I would love to sing with Chris Stapleton. I think he's awesome. Um, Blake Shelton. I got to sing with him on tour when I was out with him and he was amazing. Does Sydney do marketing for you as well? I mean, yeah, pretty much. She kind of does everything for me. Last night, she fixed my hair if you watched our socials. 
Do you take Dolly with you on the road? I'm assuming you mean June. Um, June is not on the road with me because June gets a little nervous. She's got a little bit of anxiety for the bus. Um, but hopefully when she isn't, she's only a year and a half old. So she's still in the puppy phase of life. So hopefully when that calms down, she can come out because I miss her. Oh, Diamond Pack is my new anthem doing divorce together. Get it, girl. I see you and I feel that. What's a song that you wish you had written? Um, you don't even know who I am, Patty Loveless. What song took the longest to write? That's actually a really good question. I think 29 was a couple of sessions and Next Girl was a couple of sessions just to kind of fine tune it and get it right because we knew those were two songs that were super important. Are the tour dates written in stone or is there room for expansion? Um, that is the only dates um, for the tour. I know there's only eight um, and we had to be super just like selective in the markets and all those things, but I hope that they're close enough that you can make a road trip and come to one. Are we going to get a music video soon? Yes. I'm shooting it very soon. You wrote with Kelsey and Luke Combs. Would you collaborate with them too? Of course I would. I would love to. I love both of them as artists too. Favorite song to play? Um, I really love to sing Should Have Known Better in my set. And obviously I hope you're happy now. Are we going to get a deluxe version? I just gave you 15 songs. Let's live with those for a minute. Tell us about the album cover. I love that. Um, I wanted to go back to Kentucky and back to my roots. So we went and shot on a horse farm in Kentucky and just kind of took in the whole vibe. Um, I wanted this album to just look different than anything that I'd ever put out and anything that I had done and just take it really back to the roots of the country vibe that I grew up on. Scale of one to 10, how excited are you for your CMA nominations? Oh my gosh, like a 400 million bajillion. I'm so excited. Would you do it with Lauren Daigle? Oh my gosh, I got to meet Lauren at an event and she is the sweetest person. I would love to. I love her music. What are your favorite songs to cover at your shows? I cover Man, I Feel Like a Woman, Shania, because I just really don't feel like there's another song that gets everybody in the room going at the same time like that one. Let's see. Um, I have one more minute, let's see. Obsessed with the album art. Thank you. Favorite bar to go to in Nashville? Oh, um, I like Mother's Ruin. I like um, Margaritas at Butcher Town Hall. I like Barcelona for wine flights. I like, um, what else do I like? L.A. Jackson. Tell us about being on the road and what are the pros and cons? Okay, this will be my last question. Um, the pros are that I get to come and see you guys all the time and that we get to travel around doing what we love. The cons would be um, there are 10 of us on this bus at all times. So I um, travel, thankfully, now with two girls, which is nice. Um, but it gets a little hard living with a bunch of boys, right, girls? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just gets a little smelly when it's hot outside. Um, and then I just have a lot of stuff. And so finally they gave me the back bedroom, thankfully, because I can just throw all my stuff in there, but it looks like a tornado went off. So it's just a lot of people in, in an enclosed space, but we all really love each other. So it goes well. Um, and then the last question I saw red or white wine, red all the way, but I don't discriminate anymore against wine the or white wine. The pandemic helped me to just acquire a little bit of a taste. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and remember to stay on here because you're going to get exclusive, uh, 
content from the making of the album and it's super cool. So I hope I get to see you guys on the road. Thank you for all the love today and thank you for your questions. It's awesome.